Choosing an e-bike can be a difficult old business. So today we're gonna to help you navigate your way through a range of bikes, some beauties from 3,000 to 5,000 pounds. Well, Chris, how on earth do you choose an e-mountain bike if you've got three to 5,000 pounds burning a hole in your pocket? Good question that, Steve. Should you go for the motor that's in it? Maybe the battery size should be a consideration. The looks, the travel, the wheel size, hardtail or full suspension, lots of different options there. Yeah, I mean, may, I mean, maybe let's start with the motor then. Now, there's some obviously some key brands on the market, Shimano, Bosch, Bros, Yamaha. Now, each motor has actually got its own characteristic, which has been tuned by the boffins uh, of each manufacturer. Now, each motor has got different power, different noise levels. Some have apps, some do not. And obviously there's the battery capacity of each motor. As I mentioned, you know, Shimano, Bosch, Bros, Yamaha, are the main brands, but I want to cast your eye on this little beauty, Chris, uh, from Swiss Swiss brand Flyer. Now they've got a Panasonic motor in here, 600 watts, 90 newton meters of torque, uh, 630 watt hour battery. This bike is the Uprock Seven. It's got 160 mil travel. I think it's you know it's under 5,000. Mm. It's a good little option. Yeah, it's a good looking bike, that isn't it? Especially with that Panasonic mm. motor, something you don't see too much really. But I want to come back with this one. This is a giant Trance E Plus Pro 29er, 4699. This bike, Steve. It's got that giant sync drive motor in there, which is similar to the Yamaha motor. Uh, but Giant have their own app on this, meaning it's got loads of different tuning options. 150 mil travel, 625 watt hour battery. Ticks all the boxes for me. Yeah, and you can be sure there'll be good componentry on those Giant bikes Definitely. for sure. Now, I want to now sort of focus attention, the big discussion, you know, should you go full suspension or hardtail? I will always go full suspension myself, but this little Grape G5 hardtail here, 4,690 pounds, it's got a 700 watt hour battery. And as you know, because we've ridden this motor, a really punchy little motor in this, in this unit here. Yeah. Now, obviously we've covered, we've covered three brands there. We've touched on some of the big players, but remember there's always the likes of Bafang, a big player in e-mountain biking. You've got Polini from Italy, you've got TQ, and of course Fazua, which we'll discuss a little bit later. Uh, now, moving on now to possibly one thing that most people will choose their bikes on, and that is looks. Now, this Cube Stereo Hybrid 140 really caught my eye, 4,299 pounds. It's got the fourth gen uh, Bosch motor in there. It's got a 625 watt hour battery, Shimano XT, a dropper, some great range of sizing, and some nice looking tires. It's a cool color, that one. Petrol and Peach, I believe they call that one. Great looking bike. But check this out yeah. for blowing your eyeballs out. This is a specialized Levo <laughs> coming in at 4,800 pounds, brass yellow, big 700 watt hour battery in there, 29 inch wheels. And of course, it's got that Brose motor in there pumping out 90 newton meters of torque. But what about materials, Steve? Obviously, you've got that big price point of aluminium. You might get a few carbon models coming in. What have we got carbon wise for around that price point? You know, this is it. This and this ties in with you know we we looked at the Specialized a minute ago. Yeah. Now the Specialized is an alloy bike at four thousand eight hundred pounds. Uh, obviously, this is the base level bike. But when it comes to performance, I think you'll find that you know it's got the same motor in it, and you know it'll be be able to conquer the same type of hills. Now a lot of people will think that for less than five thousand pound, you will primarily be having. Uh, alloy bikes, but that's not quite the case because Radon have this Render 9, mm. uh, a very nice looking bike, 5,049 euros. It's got a full carbon frame, 29 inch wheels. Uh, again, Bosch Generation 4 motor, 625 watt hour battery, and some really good quality componentry on there. Mm. So yeah, it, goes to, it goes to show that um, you can get different materials at the three to 5,000 pound price mark. Definitely. Uh, now moving on to the amount of travel that you choose to have on your e-mountain bike. This could be a major consideration because after all, uh, the bike you choose should be linked to the type of terrain that you're going to be riding on. Now, Chris, obviously I see you in the bike park a lot of the time on the downhill tracks and you do tend to go for the longer traveled bikes, don't you? 
Yeah, I think having that extra travel, you know, if you're doing the big jumps and free ridey stuff is a nice safety blanket. But I think as a base level, those 150, 160 mil bikes are where we're seeing most people are at. But saying that, you know, I've ridden the short travel Neuron at 130 mil travel, and that thing was an absolute blast when you're riding those cross country sort of normal sort of trail riding. But Chris, let's have a chat about uh, about some bikes at different travel. Now, me and you rode Dartmoor yep. uh, a couple of weeks ago. First time I've actually ever ridden a 140 mil travel bike. Mm -hmm. And we covered some pretty difficult terrain. Now, this is the Merida E140. It's the 500 model, comes in at yep. 4,300 pound. It's got the large capacity Shimano battery on there. It's got the EP8 motor. It's, it's light, it's got a good component spec on it. So, you know, definitely one to be looking at. Yeah. Um, and then when we go up in travel, let's go now to 150 mil travel. Of mm. course, you've got the Canyon Spectral, 4,999 pounds. And I think this is an amazing value bike when you look at the, the component spec on it. Uh, this time it's a 29, 27.5 uh, wheel size mix and something we haven't discussed yet because after all, wheel size will be something which some people will be tuned into, right? Yeah, definitely. I think on this style of riding, that is really important. Obviously, you've got your 29ers for your general standard sort of trail riding. And sort of 27.5 seems to be creeping in for that gravity style sort of park bike, doesn't it? Yeah, I think I think when you get 150, 160, 170, you know, you see the likes of you know the bikes such as the white E160 to E180. You now they're 27.5 inch yep. wheel sizes, um, but sometimes it's also the battery which you might need to take into account. Now, the Husqvarna Mountain Cross is a classic example in point. Uh, now, the we've got two versions of the bike here. We've got the yeah. five and the six. Now, one of them is 4,399 euros and the other one is uh, 4,899 euros. And the only real difference is, apart from the colorways and, and a few component details, is one's got a 504 watt hour battery and the other one has got the larger capacity 630 watt hour battery. But I have to say, Chris, those are two very good looking bikes uh, from Husqvarna, right? Yeah, they are. I think it's pretty similar with the Levo, isn't it? They do the base model uh, alloy Levo, which has that smaller capacity battery compared to that 700 watt hour in the next level up. So as I mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, as you go from 150 to 160, and do you know what? I really think that 150, 160 is the sweet spot on an e-mounted bike. It can yeah. be that do-it-all do mm -hmm. bike. You know, as we saw a recent trip uh, around Wales on the Spectral, but when you go up in size in now 180 mil travel, can you actually get an e mountain bike under 5,000 for uh, 180 mil travel, Chris? Yes, you can. The new Canyon Torque is just coming in, uh, at just under 5k, 4,999 pounds. But the great thing about this bike is that it comes stock with that 504 watt hour battery. But for that price, it's coming with two of those batteries. So you can just stick a fresh one in. So you've got just over a thousand watt hours of battery power with this. So yeah, great option, I think. Uh, and at the top of the list, obviously yeah. there are downhill bikes. Now we're looking at 200 millimeters of travel. And I think, Chris, this is possibly one of the most beautiful, amazing e-mounted bikes I've ever seen. This is the Husqvarna. And uh, this comes in at 5,699 euros. Now I can't mm. quite think, does that translate to sub 5,000 pounds? Just, just about, right? Just under, yeah, like 4.8 or something, I think. 4,850, I think. But it's a great yeah. looking bike, isn't it? But I think obviously you're very limited to uh, the type of riding you're gonna be doing on that. It's, it's designed basically as a shuttle bike, isn't it? Get you back up to the top of the hill as fast as possible and smash your way back down it, you know? It's a great looking bike, well, that though. Well, you say that, Chris. I've seen that you've proved that a long travel e-mounted bike can go True. on cross country loops, yeah. Uh, so Chris, I think we've covered a lot of things there. We've yeah. covered looks, we've covered material, we've covered motor, we've covered battery. Well, just about, I mean, and of course, there's other things such as warranty, there's mm -hmm. backup, there's spares. And I think, you know, definitely those big player motors, which we talked about, they've got some great uh, backup service behind them. So yeah. Uh, yeah, we've touched on a few things there, folks. Uh, let us know your thoughts uh, or questions when it comes to e-mountain bikes uh, from 3,000 to 5,000 pounds. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big subject and it's also a lot of money. So it's not mm -hmm. to be taken uh, and seriously for sure.
It's nice that springtime is here. Have you noticed I've got my uh, black t-shirt on today to contrast with the purple? This actually la lampshade is exactly the same as the purple or grey nice. colour uh, t-shirt. So uh, guys, get to the EMBN shop to get your springtime t-shirts in the house. Uh, speaking of in the house, Chris, did you see that GCN Plus is a new subscription uh, channel? It's pretty much the Netflix uh, of the bicycle world. Fantastic uh, documentaries on there. And uh, so guys, go over to GCN uh, to see uh, some, like I said, some amazing new films from the two-wheel world. Definitely. I think the boys have been super busy with that. Some great content on there and definitely some quality weekend watching. So you don't have to watch Netflix, you can watch bikes yeah. instead. Yeah, and I think they've got an Atherton documentary coming out very soon. So don't nice. forget to tune into that one. Uh, on the channel this week, on Friday, uh, we've got some beginner trail mistakes, which Chris will be taking you through. Uh, yep. And then on Sunday, how mm -hmm. much difference does a de-restricted e-mounted bike make uh, when it comes to performance out on the trails? Yeah, an interesting one there. Film that up at 417 Bike Park, up and down the hill. See which difference it makes and is it worth it? Is it and worth on it, Chris? Is it oh, worth I don't it, know. You have, to, you have to tune in on uh, Sunday to find that one out, Steve. Oh. And then on Monday, we're going for a drivetrain refresh in the workshop, getting all that grime out of your drivetrain and making it work as efficiently as possible. Right, it's time for comments time from all the recent videos we've done here on EMBN. We've had some great feedback from the recent commensal video where we've put an e-bike up against Neil Donahue from GMBN up and down the hill. Uh, great video, that Steve. Love that one. Thanks. I'm interested. It's funny how we all how we all describe different brand names. Like you mm -hmm. say, Commensal. I'd say Commensal. I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? Isn't it? It's like I don't uh, know what's right and wrong. Acceleration versus your acceleration. It's a funny one, isn't it? <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> questions and comments. Uh, Jonathan Van. Yeah. How would you pronounce Jonathan's surname there, Chris? Oh, thanks for that. <laughs> Zijikamon. Zijikamon? I think it's right, isn't it? Anyway, Jonathan, I uh, would love to see the comparison with Don riding the Eve versus Trail Downhill. Well, uh, yes, I've done that many times with the Don. The Don mm -hmm. is uh, is a massive fan of e-mountain bikes. I, I think he actually spends more time on e-mountain bikes than he does on mountain bikes. Uh, and then, he does, he's a closet e-biker. And then William Fowler. Uh, it'd be interesting to see an energy or calorie consumption comparison for the riders. I know you still get a workout, elevated heart rate, breathing hard, etc. on the EMTB. <laughs> But it would be interesting to see what the difference is in the actual workout. Um, well, uh, <laughs> it's a hard one, isn't it? Well, it's, it's not a hard one because we kind of know some of the facts here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's you know, and right, you know, rider weight and everything. Uh, I've recently been doing some heart rate rides, Chris, uh, and you know, zone four, zone five on an e-mountain bike uh, is certainly. Mm -hmm more than doable but um yeah i think it comes down to the weights and your fitness and your and your age and uh, and Definitely. yeah can come the tire choice and and so mm -hmm. many factors involved in that but, but william uh, i love your thinking uh, and we're totally with you and stay tuned on the channel because we will be coming out with features such as that actually while on the subject chris uh hannah wilson where we did a a, a video with a couple of weeks ago she found that not only did she, she lost weight uh, from running e mountain bike, but her resting heart rate had gone down from 75 beats per minute to 55 beats per minute. So uh, th really? there's, another, crazy, isn't it? there's another angle to the whole uh, heart mm -hmm. rate and, and breathing, which uh, William touched on there. Definitely. And we've got a last comment coming in from Pravar K. He says, people, we need more of these GMBN and EMBN collabs. Two collab videos in the same day, both over 15 minutes long. So that's the one I did with Blake uh, on the e-bike. The hopper ramps came out the same time as that video, and that was a great one. If you haven't checked that one out, head over to GMBN. Uh, now, time for send of the week. And mm -hmm. uh, Chris, what's uh, what's in the bank this week when it comes to sends? Well, we've got a couple of great entries this week, Steve. First up, this is Randall with a bit of snow action on his Fantic e-bike drifting and sliding around all over the place and towing sledges too. Wheelies, jumps, you name it, Randall is doing it. Looks like a load of fun there, look at that. Now something that doesn't look quite as much fun is Ben up at Sherwood Pines jump spot on his giant stance. 
Said he'd been riding fine, then his mate got his GoPro out, and this happens. Sounding uh, pretty winded after that one. But yeah, great. Love seeing all those sends. Keep anything, you know, coming into the show, be it crashes, uh, sends, tech stuff. We love seeing it here on EMBN. Use the upload service to get featured. We want to see, we want to see more Randall the Vandal. <laughs> <laughs> This week's Out and About is a classic mix of territory from around the world mm -hmm. and uh, it begins with Martin and his Raymon on a lovely bit of single track out in southern Sweden uh, with a bit of sunset in the background there uh, and change things up to New River Gorge in West Virginia. Um, interesting mm -hmm. to see the snows are still there. Um, this is a frigid 20F day with frozen seat posts and derailleur but still smiling uh, from Rich on his Track Rail 9.8. Yeah, got more snow action here from Jean, Jean? How would you pronounce that, Steve? Well, it's either Jean or it's John, isn't it? Yeah, 2021 Focus Jams uh, up in Mont Montreux, Switzerland. Going up as far as I could before the snow got too deep. And it's looking pretty deep there, isn't it? Yeah. Bit of a mix of tyres going on there as well, nice. Yeah, and from Whoa. deep snow to deep ash out in Sicily. Uh, now I'm taking it, this is Etna Claudio on your Mon Cando Monterra. Uh, I didn't actually know you could get up to that kind of altitude. That looks like the uh, balcony there uh, with the blue sky in the background. Uh, certainly a place that's on my list to go to. Uh, and so too is this, Threadbow in New South Wales. It looks actually a little bit like Dartmoor, Chris, wouldn't you say? It does, doesn't it? I had a, a horrible flashback then. I thought it was out on Dartmoor. <laughs> Don't want to go to that place again. Not till summer. No, and this is <laughs> this is Philip with his uh, Kelly's i90. Uh, and Kelly's nice. is a bike we looked forward to catching up with more on the channel. Uh, and, yep, then, and then finally, in Aragon in Spain, this is Glenn and the Mondraga Crafty R. That's that's more like it, isn't it, Chris? Yeah, nice dry, dusty trails. Look at that, just down into the village. Yeah, a few olives and that looks good to yeah. me. Uh, sorry, folks, Aragon. I meant southwest France, not in Spain. <laughs> but uh, there you go. There's there's the the mystery of out and about covered for this week's show. Uh, guys, keep sending in your fantastic shots from around the world, mm -hmm. and hopefully one day we'll come and see you uh, in wherever you are. It is time for Chris to cast his critical eye on this week's Bike Vault submissions. Beginning with uh, Vedran and the Grape G6.2 out in Pula in Croatia. Uh, a beautiful part of the world, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think we had a great time riding out there. and I'm loving the look of that shot. I'd love to be there myself. So I'm going to give that super nice. 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, next up is Mark Marida E16010K. Uh, gets a little bit lost in the snow there, Chris. But uh, uh, Mark, I have to say that is a wonderful bike that you have. Uh, I'm going to give it a nice. Colours. But it, it, actually, it's a super nice bike, but I think the shot is a nice. Uh, yeah. And then we have now, Gareth. He's out yeah. uh, on his leave out in Murdy. Is that how you say it, Steve? In South Wales. It's not Murdy. 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 Doesn't that mean Ma Ma mad? Marty. Marty's a bit closer. Anyway, it's an S-Works uh, with the Big Valley's loop to test range. Uh, and uh, it's, oh, crikey, it's super nice. It's South Wales. Super nice. South Wales or New South Wales? <laughs> another get, another get South Wales nice. entry. <laughs> We've got Gareth here of his Levo SL up for a bit of a night ride. Laps of the local. Nice looking shot that I like. You know, moon in the background, bikes lit up pretty good. What are you thinking, Steve? I think the bike's a bit hot, uh, mm -hmm. as in it's hot with light, not hot it's as hard, in... It's hard to take a night riding pick. I think you're being pretty harsh there. Come on. Uh, it's a beautiful sky. It's, I and think it, uh, it's in Wales. Come on. Yeah, I don't want to seem biased. Gareth, uh, Gareth you're going to give me a massive bollocking, but sorry, it's, it's a nice shot. 
as 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 to what another South Wales oh, shot. Come on, is I it, think you've done is, this bike vault. You've is been... this, this what's going on here? This is like all South Wales shots. Uh, mm. This is Ed and his track rail in Risca. Uh, now, mm. Ed, I know that the location you are in there is prime e mountain bike territory. It's a bit far away. I mean, you could zoom in and it'd be nicer, but it, I think it's uh, I think it's a nice shot. Nice shot. Well, Meanwhile, I think this one. This has got to be super nice, right, Steve? Before we even do the description. 100%. So this is Anthony on his 2020 Ghost uh, SL AMR Hybrid out in Morris, Morris Bluffs in New Jersey. Look at that shot. What are you thinking, that's an old pier or something? I don't know. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and the next shot is Jay. Um, now this is in the... Dan Dandenong Ridges in Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> Chris. This bike, an r &M SD Mountain. I haven't seen these before. No, I haven't. It's looking pretty cool, isn't it? Big chunky top tube on there, but it's got a lot of tech going on. You've got uh, 150mm travel, Fox 36 forks, Bosch Generation 4 with a roll-off hub with a belt drive as well. So some uh, pretty cool stuff going that, on. I like the look of that bike. It's nice. That, I, I mean, there's a nice angle on the bike. It's mm. an interesting bike. That's definitely a super nice shot there, Jay. And we, we want to find out more about that r &M yeah. SD Mountain for sure. Uh, yeah. And then a trio, a trio of bikes. Martin Ashton, mm -hmm. as we say, will go mental. Uh, a track rail Sam, Turbo Lever Comp, and a Turbo Lever out in White, White Tank Park, Arizona. Sounds like your kind of destination, that White Tank Park. White Tank Park. No, I've never yeah. been there, but it's looking good. It's looking good? Oh, good. I like it. I think it's super nice. What, what, better, super than, nice. what better than three mates out riding the e-mountain bikes? Definitely. Uh, wow. And... Decathlon Stylus here with Kev. He's out on Crompton Moor in Greater Manchester. After work ride for a bit of uh, play in the snow and to watch the sunset. Now, that's a yeah. cool shot, isn't it? A nice solo ride. That's yeah. got to be super nice. It, I'm not sure about that. I think it could have been a shot, a shot for out and about. It doesn't quite show the bike off, does it? It's mm -hmm. definitely a super nice out and about shot, I think. Definitely. But what about Eddie's specialised Levo Carbon Comp, Chris? Oh, that is a nice looking bike, isn't it? He's out in Bays Mountain Park in Kingsport, Tennessee, USA. Nice, isn't it? Look at the icicles hanging down off that waterfall. Looks doesn't look as cold as what, obviously what it is there, but um, I think. That's got to be a nice shot, I think. Yeah. And in a week which is has been dominated by shots from South Wales, I think this week's Bike Vault star has got to be, and excuse the accent here, from New Jersey, it's got to be Anthony and his 2020 Ghost Slammer hybrid for sure, right? Uh, Anthony, Definitely. like I said, apologies for the accent there, but um, otherwise it'd be a South Wales accent, wouldn't it, for Bike of the Week, wouldn't it? <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> Keep all those entries coming in. As I mentioned, use the upload service. That's the easiest way to get featured on the show, be it for the Bike Vault, Send of the Week, where in the world. Love seeing those pics, so keep them coming in. Um, and that's it for this week's show, Steve, isn't it? It is, sadly. Uh, mm -hmm. What a week. I've enjoyed chatting about uh, three to five thousand pound e man bikes. Folks, Definitely. get involved. Get involved in, in the chat, which, uh, you know, have we missed some bikes out? Uh, what, mm -hmm. are the hot, what are the hot bikes out there on the market? And, uh, yeah, we all want to know what the goal is for sure. Uh, so, see you next week. Cheers.